Keith Beardsley, VE3SVQ, and we're going to have a bit of fun today, hopefully get it all done today, maybe it might take a couple of days, it's an awfully hot one. This is my backyard, and just behind me you can see an MFJ1796 multibander, it's been up since 2005, and we're looking to replace it, so I'm going to try an NFED uh, half-wave uh, antenna uh, from MFJ, the 1984 MP, and just see how that works because that can also double as a portable one if I decide to do some parks on the air activation. So bear with me. So this is where I'm hoping to put it up. That's the, uh, the multiband antenna vertical there. You can see we do have some obstacles around us. That's actually an Enbridge uh, station there on their their gas pipeline which runs down the side of our property what I'm trying to do is put it up here I'm going to see where it reaches and uh, you know run the wire over that's already in the house as I'll show you in a second and this is where we're going to start the work now that's the one end of the antenna that's the box on the far end there up by the window that's where the radio is and all the other equipment it's one of the extra bedrooms that I've turned into a shack basically and that's the wire coming down. So now the matter is to string it out, see how far it goes, and then get the fiberglass pole. I have a telescoping 33 foot fiberglass pole that this will go on to. So there, see the distance here. Now that's 66 feet from my house to pretty much where the end of the wire comes to. So it's not a, a good one for a very small lot. I mean, you can, if you listen to the experts, they will tell you you can bend it and do all sorts of stuff, but if you're doing it in, in a straight line, 66 feet's a long way. And rookie mistake, when you uh, unpack the wiring, make sure you do it in such a way that it doesn't get tangled. It took me a good 15, 20 minutes to untangle mine and uh, working with thin wire like this is not fun. So pay attention to that whenever you do this. So this is where we're gonna try and set up the pole. now. What I'm using here is a T-bar, just a regular T-bar for fencing. It was an idea I got from the uh, Water Stanton website for putting one in a backyard. And you can see there's a vine there, it's gonna have to be cut, but uh, this is a, hopefully a good spot for it. I'll know once I start to push things up, but uh, for now, this is where it'll be. There you go, for now anyways, it's up. Still a few things to do, I find uh, very difficult to get the right size uh, clamps there for it. So I've got a couple on, one's a little loose and we put a bungee cord on and what have you, but it goes up and up and up <laughs> and up. And it's in action right now. So there we go. That's one job successfully done for now. Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor, Quebec. Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor, Quebec. Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor, Quebec. Hey Roger, thank you very much. Trying out a new antenna here. You're also 5'9 into Ottawa, Ontario. This is the model uh, external antenna tuner that I use, automatic. I absolutely love it. And whilst my uh, ICOM 7300 has a built-in one, I like this one. I can see everything happening. So there you go. The antenna works and uh, what you didn't see because it just takes a bunch of time. After that one contact, I made uh, three more down in the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Bulgaria, and further east as well. So. The antenna definitely performs, and like I say, this is a very noisy area, but uh, with the ICOM 7300, I can generally dial that out. So there you go. Uh, Keith Beersley, hope you had a bit of fun watching this one. And, uh, you know, lots of mistakes, and you learn every time you do it. So I'll post some of the things to remember at the end of this one. So Keith Beersley, VE3SVQ, wishing you 
a great day. 73.